Want to get creeped out? This is the story of someone who tried the Three Kings ritual and it is truly a wild one. For storytelling purposes, we will name her Lauren. Lauren was 27 years old when she tried the ritual. She grew up in the foster system since she was eight years old. That's when she was taken away from her biological family. Lauren stated that the foster care system never really was able to give her information even as she got older about why she was taken away from her family. They never seemed to be able to access any of the folders or files and there just always seemed to be unanswered questions. Something that really upset and bothered Lauren was that her memories before entering the foster care system were few and far between and seemed almost dreamlike and she never felt like truly she knew whether it was a memory or something she just made up. Now when Lauren was in her early 20s, her biological parents found her and wanted to have a relationship with her. She was apprehensive, but agreed to meet with them. They were very nice, but she did state that their relationship always felt very superficial. She started to feel comfort from having these parents to rely on though. They were well off and started helping her out financially quite a bit. By the time that she felt comfortable enough to ask why they had given her up or what had happened, it had already been about a year or two of them and her having this new found relationship. When she brought it up, they did not want to discuss it at all. They did not want to discuss her childhood at all. And they would get extremely cold whenever she brought it up. So she stopped bringing it up. She was just thankful that she could have them in her life at all. And also extremely appreciative of the financial help that she was getting from them. And she states she's not trying to sound like a bad person, but growing up in the foster care system was very difficult and trying to find a job and going to school and all of that was a lot. So having their financial help made a world of difference for her. Now to get to the Three Kings ritual. So she was 27 at the time when this occurred. Her parents were going to a friend's wedding in a different country and they asked her if she could stay at the house while they were gone, feed the cat, water the plants, that kind of thing. Lauren was very much into the spooky, the paranormal, which is quite common for people who wind up trying this ritual. She had read a ton of stories who had tried the ritual, and sometimes there seemed to be things that came up from their past in the ritual. So while she was in her childhood home, she decided that she wanted to try the ritual while her parents were in another country. Lauren winds up asking her friend Rena if she will be her loved one while Lauren tries this ritual, and Rena agrees she's not too concerned about it. So it's a Friday night. Rena comes over, they watch some TV, they order pizza. At around 11 p.m., they set up everything in the rec room of the basement. They set up the chairs, the mirrors, the mug, the water, the fan, everything. Shortly after that, they go to sleep and Lauren has a stuffed teddy bear that she had from before she entered the foster care system. The only item that she has that she knows she had before the foster care system. She puts that under her pillow and goes to sleep. She didn't have any strange dreams. She slept pretty good. Her alarm goes off at 3.30 a.m. and she wakes up. She grabs the candle, grabs the lighter, and quickly makes her way into the basement, passing by Rena, who has also woken up and is now just in the living room reading a book. Lauren is seated in her throne, candle lit, teddy bear in her one hand by 3.33 in the morning, and she is ready for this ritual. She's got her cell phone in her pocket. The alarm is set for 4.34. Now, for the first little while, Lauren sits there in silence, listening to the sounds of the house, the soft creak of the house shifting in changing weather, the sound of the furnace coming on. She feels pretty calm, feeling like maybe this was a dumb idea. Probably nothing's gonna happen in her mind. And she's feeling pretty skeptical. She's not sure how long she sits there for, but at some point she hears footsteps to her left and the sound of children laughing. She is spooked out by this, but is also realizing that the fact that she hears children laughing could be a sign that maybe there is something from her past that is going to pop up. However, the sound kind of dissipates and everything gets quite quiet again. So she's sitting there in silence, staring straight ahead, making sure not to look at the mirrors. She knows she's not supposed to do that. This time though, she hears a noise from the right and it sounds like some kind of growl and her immediate reaction is to look. She can't help it. Her head whips in that direction, terrified that she's about to see something there. She sees her reflection in the mirror, which startles her, but the, her reflection in the mirror is like coming and going in waves. And in comes this 
image of her as a child at a birthday party. She's got one of those cone little birthday party hats on her head. There is these kids surrounding her and they're eating cake. And there's one little girl next to her that looks very similar to her and is wearing a similar outfit to her. She goes to look at this little girl and this little girl's face is completely blurred. The other little girl's look like regular little girls. But this other one that has similar hair to her, has a similar outfit to her, you can't see what her face looks like. Next she hears what sounds like glass breaking to her left. And again, it is like she cannot control it. It is beyond her control. She looks to the left immediately and sees her reflection this time in the left mirror. And again, it is almost like she's looking at a reflection in water, but her reflection starts to dissipate and she can see her parents, though they're about 15 years or so young looking. In between them, there are two little girls walking and holding hands. So all four of them are holding hands. Her mother is holding her hand. Her father is holding the hand of this little girl that she doesn't know. And she's also holding the hand of that little girl. That little girl's face again is blurred. She's a little bit shorter than Lauren. They have similar hair and similar outfits. She is staring at that image when she hears to her left someone say right next to her, shh, it's okay. It's time to go to sleep. Again, her head whips into that direction to look at whatever made that sound. And this time in the mirror, she doesn't see her reflection. She sees a childhood bedroom. It is currently the spare bedroom that is in the house she's in now, but it looks a little bit different. There is two single beds on either side of the room, and it's very clear that it is a children's bedroom. The reflection in the mirror is showing her as a little girl laying in bed, staring at that other side of the room with her eyes open. On the other side of the room is her mother leaning over the other bed and lulling somebody else to sleep. Her mother walks away, leaving the bedroom, and Lauren can see this other little girl laying in the bed, her face completely blurred. So she can't tell what she looks like, but she can see that she has similar brown hair to Lauren and that she's clearly in the same bedroom as Lauren going to sleep. Suddenly, Lauren comes to from the sound of her alarm going off on her cell phone. And this is also pretty unusual for a lot of people who try the Three Kings ritual. It seems like they're in this trance state and that someone has to take them out of the ritual by splashing water on them. That's a lot of times how it ends. Lauren goes upstairs and tells her friend Rena that nothing happened because she just doesn't want to discuss what she experienced and a part of her is wondering if she just fell asleep and imagined the whole thing. The next day her friend Rena goes home and Lauren decides that she is going to do whatever she has to to investigate her childhood. She wants answers. She wants to know who this mystery little girl was, was this all just a dream? There's a storage room in the basement that she searches through and doesn't really find anything of note. There's pots and pans, old dishes, old ornaments, but nothing that could truly lead her in any direction. She winds up calling the foster system that again had her in their care. And once again, they never seem to be able to actually get any of her records. They never seem to actually be able to give her any answers. And she's so frustrated by this. A couple of days pass and she She's kind of given up again on trying to find answers, at least for now. When she's walking through the hallway towards the spare bedroom and notices that there is an attic door. So she decides that is someplace that she hasn't looked and decides to get up into the attic. As soon as she gets up into the attic, she's extremely overwhelmed. It's pretty dark in there. She feels kind of spooked out. There's also a lot of boxes, clearly with a lot of stuff, a lot of old junk, a lot of old pictures, furniture, dishes. There's there's just stuff everywhere, stacked everywhere, and she has no idea where to even begin. She remembered thinking to herself, please let there be some kind of sign of where I should start. And right as she thought that, she heard what sounded like footsteps behind her, which really startled her. And then she heard a bang. So she turns around, really freaked out, really scared, and this old mirror has kind of knocked over. That was what the bang was. She doesn't know what the footsteps were, but it doesn't look like anyone's there. Lauren goes towards this mirror that was knocked over, and it's knocked over on top of this box that says, do not open. Naturally, she's gonna open it. She opens it and finds a ton of paperwork. So number one, she finds plenty of newspaper articles and clippings about a little girl. And for storytelling purposes, we will name this little girl, Melanie. She finds articles about this little girl, Melanie, who has been kidnapped from her home and everybody is searching for her. They're organizing a search. She looks at the date and she would have 
been around seven at that time. The girl in the picture who's missing looks somewhat like her, but a little bit different. Same brown hair though. And it's starting to unravel that this was her little sister. Within this box, she also finds two birth certificates. One of this little girl, Melanie, and one of what she believes to be her, Lauren. Same eye color, has the same date of birth, but a different name, different first name. There's so many newspaper articles. She reads through a ton of them. And one of them state that her parents will give them the last name Johnson, that the Johnsons lose their second child, this time to the system. And basically the article goes on to say that both of her parents wound up drinking excessively after their one daughter had been found unalived. There's not a lot of details in the newspaper article about why Lauren would have been taken away, but it's clear that there was some serious neglect going on. Lauren starts to piece everything together and from her view of everything that she found, her parents had her and her sister. Her sister was kidnapped and unalived. Her parents were distraught when her sister was found, started drinking excessively and neglecting her. She was taken away and somewhere along the line, she wound up with a different first name, same last name, and wound up in the foster care system with no knowledge of her past. And she wound up in the foster care system with either the foster care system not being allowed to tell her the information or them being given incorrect information. Regardless, she's grown up with the name Lauren. That's not the name on the birth certificate. To her knowledge, there's no other child other than her and her sister, Melanie, that existed. And that she's not even sure of. This is just what she thinks that she's pieced together. Her parents are quite prim and proper. She's thinking that despite all of this stuff that they've gone through, despite wanting to reconnect with her, they don't want to face the past. They don't want to face what happened. So that's it for this one. Let me know if you're interested in knowing about what happens when Lauren winds up confronting her parents. It's not anything to do with the Three Kings ritual. It's just the rest of the story. So let me know if you're interested and I'll see you next time.